friends. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a standard paper weaving with a little optical illusion design thrown in. Now for the basics, if you want a regular checkerboard weaving, check out my checkerboard weaving video. For this project, you'll wanna start with a piece of paper. It can be white, it can be black, it can be any color you want. This will be your loom. And of course, you're going to need some weft strips. Remember, weft is the material you weave with. And in this case, our weft is indeed paper. Now I have construction paper, so I cut my construction paper into these one inch strips. You don't have to do that if you don't want to though. What you could do is color a piece of paper, any design you want. You could even draw something on here and then chop it up. And the way you chop it, is you use your ruler to make these even spaces. Now, I thought it would be kind of cool, what would this look like if I had different widths going on? So I have a few thicker, a few thinner pieces, and I'm just gonna chop all these up and use these if I want to. You could also, for your weft strips, take pieces of construction paper or paper that you've painted, drawn on, or anything you want, and I've collaged them together to make just a little extra pop for my weaving. I don't know if I'll use these this time, but I like having the option. So really quick, before I get to the loom, I do wanna chop up these pieces so you can see what it looks like when I use different sizes. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those now. Awesome, I have my weft strips together. I'm just gonna put these here, put those here. Maybe I'll use a bunch of these together, why not? Now let's talk about your design. The loom is a little different when you're making one with an optical illusion aspect to it. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna start off the same way, fold the paper, hold it the long way in front of you, fold away from you, double check those corners, Pinch the middle, swipe, swipe. Never swipe from one a whole edge because your paper could whoosh, warp on you. Now for this demonstration, I am using a white pencil just because it'll show up better in the video. But you, if you have a regular pencil, that will be just fine. I'm gonna make my scissor stop line on the open edge. Okay, and let's make sure it opens on that edge. Yes, I'm gonna write stop so I know to stop cutting right at this line. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna design different um, lines. Instead of using straight ones across, I'm gonna use some diagonal. I might use some curvy, totally up to you. There are so many different patterns and designs you can use. For example, here are a few ideas. Now, I don't quite know how these will look when we weave them. You'll just have to give it a try and find out. So these, I use different kind of vertical lines, but I want you to notice with each of these pieces, each of these examples, the lines never touch the edges. See that? They're always at least two fingers or a thumb away from each other and the corners. It's very important, otherwise you're gonna end up with a bunch of pieces. This will give you a cool design, all diagonals, but let's check, nothing near the corners. Great, and they're all two fingers or at least one thumb apart. Here's another idea, this is all curvy lines. Now when you make curvy lines, Unless you are the most confident scissor master in the world, keep your curvy lines stretched. We don't want a huge snake-like whirly-whirly line because do you wanna cut that line? I know I don't. So uh, yeah, keep your curvy lines gentle and stretched already. And here is one of my favorites. I love to do combos with different lines. So these are just examples, but remember, nothing should touch the edges. No line should touch any corner or edges, nor should they overlap. And that means nothing can touch. If you have a point, you're just gonna cut out a giant shape, Oh, which is not what we're looking for. Uh, so here we go. I'm gonna make my first lines. I think I want some diagonal lines on either side. I'm gonna keep my ruler at the corner so I know, don't you dare draw on that. 
hold it down, boom, one line, ready to go. And then I'm just gonna match it on this side. If you wanna get really, really specific about it, you could always measure, okay, that's two inches away. I'll mark two inches here, boop. And then just place my ruler down right at the corner, hold it down, a little backwards line there. Boom. But you could also guess as well. It doesn't need to be exact, it's your weaving after all. I'm gonna do one more diagonal line here. Yeah, I like the way that looks. Now, if you're going behind you, this can be a little tricky. Feel free to turn your page if you need to, because this is not the most ideal way to draw your lines. Now, I'm done with my ruler. I think I want some curvy lines in here, but I gotta be gentle, because I don't have that much room. Are they allowed to touch up here? No, no, they are not. So here I go. A gentle, curvy line. Is there a finger between? Yes, do they touch? No, okay, here we go. This one's gonna be a little tricky. Out, in, don't wanna get too close, and back out. All right, let's make sure I can fit one finger. You might wanna use your thumb, and I think I'm ready to go. All righty, I have my illusion ready. Now I'm going to cut my loom. Remember, hold it at the top or get a binder clip and really make sure that top cannot open. You always fold from the folded edge. Now let's say you make this design and you're like, you know what, I don't really know about this. Just flip it over and do it again. You don't have to worry about this because it's gonna be the back anyway. I'm satisfied though, so I am going to cut my lines. Awesome. Now it's time to weave. Let's open this up. Aha, looks pretty sweet. It's gonna be pretty cool. Now, when we make these optical illusion weavings, you might not see something that's actually like a real optical illusion. It's just a fun trick of your eye to play with the paper, play with the different widths of your weft and your lines, and see what kind of fun um, result comes out. It's kind of experimentation. Be a creative problem solver. That's all I'm asking. Anyways, let's get to weaving. Remember, just like our regular weaving, we start over, under, over, under, all the way across. Just because your strips might be thick or thin, just because your lines might be a little further apart, that does not matter. It is always over, under, over, under, all the way across. And of course, scoot, scoot, scoot it on down. There you go. And I think I'm gonna use a thin one next. Mm. Under. Over, because I started over, I start under on top. I like to start in the middle of my weaving just because it's a little easier for me to control. Scoot, scoot, scoot it on down. Look at that. That's pretty cool, if I do say so myself. There we are, there we are, there we are. And I'm just gonna keep on going. Maybe I'll do a bit of each of these in here. And that is it, my friends. I have finished my weaving. Remember, the top row can be a little tight. So you wanna make sure you scoot, scoot, scoot all of your strips down, down, down to make room. Now, as you see, I didn't really have a pattern going. I just wanted to see what would happen, but I kinda like it. I think it's pretty cool. You get different sort of shapes and movement going along, depending on the thickness or thinness of these strips. So now, the last step, of course, will be to glue down our tabs. Otherwise, these are just gonna be floppy floppy all the way up. I'm gonna use a glue stick because it's a little less messy than liquid glue. But if all you have is liquid glue, remember, one dot will be plenty. Just use it maybe on these thinner ones, put a little dot on your finger, and then wipe it along, and that will help you out a bunch. I'm gonna get gluing. And remember, you do the front and the back. Look how different the back looks. Oh, that's pretty sweet too. I dig it. Awesome. Alrighty, I am all done with gluing both sides. And I'm finished. Pretty cool, huh? Now before I go, I wanted to show you one more that I'm going to create. 
and I have a bunch of different lines here, and I'm gonna use these weft strips. So, let's see what I create. And that's it, all finished. What I love about this pattern in particular is that I used an odd number of lines where my first design I had an even number, one, two, three, four, five, six, this one has seven. With the even one, you always end how you start. This is starting under, ends under. Start over, end over. With this pattern, with an odd number of lines, I start over, I end under. It does a little swip swap. And I love the way the colors just work and play together. I also wanted to show you one more that I made. Check out that awesome painting. So I painted a piece of paper first, then I cut it into strips. And you can see there is so much fun stuff you can do with weaving. Can't wait to see what you create.